Our scripture lessons today will be from Luke, 24th chapter. I'll be reading verses 36, then I'll read verses 44 through 48. That's Luke, 24th chapter. I'll start at verse 36, then I'll be reading verses 44 through 48. And as you're turning there, um, I got a note for everybody. There will be a bake sale right after downstairs. Amen. <laughs> Luke 24, chapter 36, then 44 through 48. And 36 verse says, and as they thus spake, Jesus himself stood in the midst of them and said unto them, Peace be unto you. And verse 44, And he said unto them, These are the words which I spake unto you while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled which were written in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me. Then opened he their understanding that they might understand the scripture. And said unto them, Thus it is written, and thus it behooved Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day. And the repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. Verse 48. And Ye are witnesses of these things. And we're going to be talking about star witness. Star witness. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for another opportunity to break the bread of life together. We thank you for another opportunity to be in this place today, Father, just to lift up our faith and to lift up you. And as we lift you up in worship, Lord, we just thank you for everything that you've done in us this far. We thank you for this worship experience, Lord, that we are enjoying, Father, in you. And as our minds are steadfast on you, Lord, we just give you praise, honor, and glory that is yours. So we ask that you will move self out of the way that you will come shining through as a ray of light. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. And you are witnesses of these things. This is what Jesus told his disciples before he departed. And we're going to talk about a star witness. Because when he told his disciples that they were witnesses, they weren't just to be any kind of witness. They were star witnesses to what Jesus wanted them to tell the world. Now, what is a star witness? A star witness is a witness who provides a major and crucial information in a court case. When a star witness is um, taking the stand, everybody stands up and takes notes. Because the star witness is the one that has an eyewitness account or a first-hand account of the events that has taken place. A star witness just isn't a witness. It's not a hearsay witness. It's not somebody that heard it by mouth. It's somebody that has seen and that touched the situation firsthand. So when a star witness testifies, everybody stops. When a star witness is on the stand, especially in the secular world, we will find the news media will rush into the courtroom just to hear what a star witness would have to say. They don't do that for anybody. They can even have an expert witness, but an expert witness don't trump a star witness. So a star witness is one that everybody stops to listen to. And Jesus told his disciples, and he told them this, he told them that you are witnesses of these things that I'm telling you. So, as we look at his disciples, what things were Jesus talking about that they were supposed to be witnesses of? What things? As the disciples' understanding opened in the scripture, and as Jesus explained them to the scriptures, they, the word says their understanding just sort of unraveled and opened up. 
See, you, the disciples didn't get the word on the first shot. You know, sometimes we think we're supposed to read the Bible and get it all at once. You know, sometimes after we get into the word, the word starts unraveling and opening up to us, and our understanding opens up. So it says when Jesus started explaining to them, it said that their understanding opened up. And Jesus looked at them, and as their understanding opened up, Jesus said, look, you're going to be witnesses of what I'm going to tell you. Amen. So, what are they witnesses of? Three things. Number one, Jesus said, you are witnesses of how I suffer. That was number one. Number two, your witnesses of how I rose again on the third day from the dead. Number three, your witnesses of how repentance and remission of sins should be preached in my name everywhere. You are star witnesses to these three things. Because he told them, you are witnesses of these things that I'm telling you. So, number one, how Christ suffered. Now, Jesus suffered for all of us, first of all. Amen. It's that one person in here that Jesus didn't suffer for. Yeah. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquity. He was chastised for our peace. And by his stripes, we are here. Jesus suffered for all of us. And he just didn't suffer for nothing. Jesus, Jesus suffered so that we would not have to endure undue pain. That's why Jesus suffered. When the load gets too heavy, we can call on the name of the Lord. And Jesus already been through what we have to go through. So we have a way out when we call on him. Amen. And I'm telling you now, if Jesus Christ had bore some of your burdens, you should be a star witness for him because you got it firsthand. Amen. Some of you got it firsthand. You know what Jesus did for you. You've seen it for yourself. That makes you a star witness. Do I have any star witnesses in the house? Did Jesus Christ suffer? Because see, if Jesus Christ never suffered for you, he never star witness. You heard it from a hearsay. Because only star witnesses can witness and testify to the fact that Jesus Christ did it for me. You got to know a star witness in here. Has Jesus Christ ever done it for you? See, if Jesus Christ did it for you, that makes you a star witness. Because nobody can tell you what Jesus Christ did. You know what he did because you are our witness to what he has done for you. Make sure a star witness that does. You are a star witness. And he's telling his disciples, and we are his present day disciples, that he, that we are a star witness. So if I have any star witnesses in the house, you need to shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. How, number two, he said, how Christ rose again from the dead. How he rose again. We're a star witness today. Oh no, we didn't see it. But if the disciples were listening, when Jesus Christ died, they should have been in revival for the two days after they saw him crucified on the cross. Yeah. It should have been a revival. You know, because when he, he said he was going to die, but he said he was going to return. So when he died, it should have been a revival, but they had their heads hung low. And I tell you, when churches have revival today, people already make their schedules. Well, we have a revival. I ain't going to. Well, see, if you say the Bible and you don't want to go, you must not expect Jesus to do nothing. Amen. Because, see, these disciples, after Jesus died, they were walking with their heads on the low. Peter talking about he going fishing. The other disciples wanted to go fishing, too. We talked last week about these two guys that were coming from Jerusalem walking all sad because they thought it was all over. Man, didn't they hear what Jesus Christ said? That on the third day, I'm getting up. Amen. Shouldn't you be a star witness on the fact that he got up? Amen. So we're here. And they should be in revival because Jesus Christ already said he's going to get up. So I'm telling you, if you believe Jesus Christ, he can get up and on the third day. So the disciples, they should have been in revival, but they weren't. They weren't in revival. They were in pity. They were in sorrow. They were in pain because they didn't believe Jesus Christ at his word. So how Christ rose again from the dead. Two days knowing that Jesus would come back on the third day, we should be happy. And I'm telling you, some of us have some situations in our life where we know that Jesus Christ rose up in that day. Some of us have some bad situations in our life where we know Jesus Christ has brought us back. You know, he came back on us, and we should be rejoicing because he did. So it is no dead situation. And somebody to start witness of how Jesus Christ rose in your life. How Jesus Christ came up and gave you a witness and gave you a testimony like none other, which made you a star witness.
because nobody told you that Jesus Christ rose again in your life. You know it for a fact. You know it for a fact because you see it. You see now when everybody said you were dead and gone, how you got up. You saw how when they said you were jobless and homeless out, he got you home. He rose up that dead situation. You saw it how when you opened your wallet, you had nothing coming out of mall balls. But he, he rose that up too. He rose that up too. So when Jesus Christ raised something up, that makes you an eyewitness. You see dead relationships that he resurrected. You seen your body down and out, and the doctor gave you no hope, but Jesus Christ got you up again. I tell you, somebody needs a hug and say amen, because you are a star witness. Nobody has to tell you that. You didn't have to go to a preacher to say, did I get it? No, Jesus Christ got you up. On the third day, he got you up in your situation in your life, which makes you a star witness of what he has done for you. Because without the resurrection, we have no faith. So it's been things in our life that we need to resurrect. And guess what? After today, it's going to be something in our life that's going to need resurrection too. Because we always need a resurrection experience. Because things die, but hey, thank God, thank God for Jesus Christ that we know things can raise again. But you are eyewitness to the things that he already rose up in your life. Make sure it's all witness. Amen? Amen. Look at your neighbor and say, I saw witness. <laughs> you're a star witness because you know that you know. Nobody told you about this. You already know. Number three, he told his disciples how repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name to all nations, to everybody. Jesus died and rose to roll back our sins. He rolled back all of our sins. Look, we are human beings, aren't we? Yes. But nobody in here marshal or nothing like that. But we all human beings. And being human beings, we are not perfect. Amen. Somebody didn't say amen. amen. Now, I'll pause for the people that are perfect. So you can stand up and say, I ain't on this one. <laughs> oh, okay. We are all human beings, so we're not perfect. So if you're not perfect, Jesus died for you. Because he knew we weren't perfect. So he died for our sins. Jesus is the cover up for our mess ups. Yeah. Anybody ever messed up? Y'all got raise your hand. Yeah. Hey, look, if you just messed up, just, just look around. <laughs> hey, because if you messed up, Jesus died for you so he could cover up your mess up. He died for me so that he could cover up my mess up. He died so that we could cover up our mess up. He wanted his disciples to tell the world that Jesus Christ lives and Jesus Christ still saves. Yes, yes. And he still lives and still saves because they know this firsthand because he lives in them and he saved them. Jesus Christ lives in us and he saved us. Nobody had to tell you you got saved. You know for a fact you got saved because one day somebody gave you an invitation and you knew something happened in your heart and you got up from your seat came down, not because somebody told you, but because Jesus Christ gave you to your heart, which made you a star witness of what Jesus Christ did for you. Is there a star witness in the house? Has anybody walked down this aisle one day, or somebody turned out as a star witness to the fact what Jesus Christ did to you? Today, Jesus is looking, still looking for star witnesses, for people that got it firsthand, not for somebody that told you something. Because my mama's faith, faith is fine. My daddy's faith is fine. My grandmama's faith is fine. But I tell you whose faith is better when he talks to me and I know what I know because I'm a star witness. See, if I'm not on my grandmama's faith, that's just what I heard. That don't make me a star witness. Meaning that, yeah, my grandmama went through all of that, but I didn't go through nothing. I'm just riding on her faith. So therefore, if something hit me heavy in life, I'm down and out. Because I don't know, I wasn't privy to the fact that I saw it first day. But if I know that I know, and I was a witness to the fact that Jesus woke me up this morning, he stopped me on my way, he just got into my heart, and he did something for me, and I know that I saw it with my own eyes, oh, I'm going to stop with this, and I can say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord.
Today. They're making your time to take a stand. 